iOS has a framework called User Notifications, and it does pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Let's just create notifications that are shown to the user. Now, there are two types of these. One is a remote notification that comes from a server, and one's a local notification that comes from code scheduled locally in our application. Now, remote notifications do require a server to work, because your server talks to Apple's push notification service, APNS, which then talks to users' devices. In comparison though, local notifications are really easy to use and provide a lot of power without a lot of work. To try this out, go ahead and add a new import for user notifications. And next we're gonna put in some basic structure that will fill in with local notifications code. Now, using these things requires that we first ask the user for permission to show notifications. This means uh, registering for the kind of things you want to show. Do you want a badge? Do you want an alert? Do you want a sound, for example? And we'll place buttons to get us started inside a VStack in our body right here. So we'll say there's a VStack with our first button called request permission. And let's do our first code here. And then there's a button, schedule notification. And second code here. Okay. That's our setup complete. So we now turn to the first of two important pieces of work, which is requesting authorization to show alerts in the first place. Now they take a variety of forms behind the scenes, but the most common thing is to ask for permission for alerts, badges, and sounds. That doesn't mean we've got to use alert, badges, and sounds at the same time, just the user grants them. They have permission up front so we can be selective later on. Now, when we tell iOS, what kind of notifications you want to show, it's gonna prompt the user. So they have the chance to say, yep, looks good to me, or no, I don't think so. And when they make a choice, we'll get a completion closure called, telling us whether it works or not. So we'll say inside our first code block here, un user notification center dot current dot request authorization. And our options, what we want to show, we'll say I want to show alert and badge, that's the name for numbers over your app icons, and sounds. And the completion handler, this will be called, telling us whether it worked or not, success, but also, if it didn't work, what the error was. As you can tell immediately, this is an older API. These two, really only one can be true, either worked, was an error. This would be a great place for a result, for example, if that were still a thing uh, when this was uh, made quite a while ago now. Anyway, <clears throat> inside here, if success is true, we can just print out, we're all set. Good to go. Else, if let error equals error, we'll print out error.localized description. So, if it all worked correctly, just print out all set. We're now all clear to start creating notifications, asking them to be sent in the future. Now, even though um, notifications might seem simple from a user perspective, Apple actually breaks them down into three parts to give us maximum flexibility. We have the content that should be shown, which is a title, subtitle, sound, image, hello, and so on, the content. Then we have the trigger, determining when the notification should be shown. This might be a number of seconds from now. It might be a precise time in the future. It might, hey, wait a minute, get that out still. It might be a precise location. Get off my trackpad. <laughs> a precise location, like when they arrive here or leave here or whatever, then show the, the alert. Uh, so that's our content and our, our trigger, what, what shows, oh, don't lick me. Um, that we finally put those together into a request. So request is content plus trigger, but it also adds a unique identifier. We can say the ID for this is some particular string, which allows us to edit the alert later or remove it if we want to, we want to cancel it. And Apple uses this for things like, um, they recommend you use it for, uh, such and such team has scored a goal. And you could you could do that again and again and again, like if it's a popular scoring game like basketball with lots of 
high score numbers in there and so forth, it'd be pretty tiresome to see sort of 50 notifications in your lock screen. And so you'd remove one with a previous score, add another one, remove one, add, remove, add, remove, add, or update the existing one so it wouldn't get too annoying. Uh, if you don't care, if you don't want to just want to show it on the screen straight away, there's not a chance to remove it, a UUID is absolutely fine. Anyway, down you get. Now, when you're just learning, the easiest trigger to use is called a time interval trigger. And this says, after X seconds, just show the alert. Anyway, down here in our second block of code, we're going to go ahead and make our content first. We'll say our content is a UN mutable notification content. The content title will be feed the dogs, apparently. And the subtitle is they look hungry. They always do. The sound, I'm going to use UN notification sound dot default. That's our content. Now for a trigger. I'll say our trigger is a UN time interval notification trigger. With time interval being five seconds from now, not repeating. So that's our content and our trigger. And now our request, this is going to be a UN notification request with a random identifier. We don't care to try and remove it. So I'll say UUID dot UUID string. That gives me it as a string. Our content will be content and our trigger will be our trigger. And that's all three pieces of data to go. Content, trigger, combination as a request. And now we can say un user notification sensor dot current dot add that request. Take that. Go ahead and schedule it to run. And now go ahead and run your app. Hopefully, if they're going to plan, I can press request here. It'll say they'd like to show you uh, alerts, sounds, and badges. Are you sure? I'll press allow. We'll see all set down here, printed out. It's good to go, basically. And now, when I press uh, the schedule button, I'm going to press Command L shortly after. That will lock the simulator screen, which is where the alert will appear. I'll press schedule and then Command L. And hopefully, five seconds or so, bang. Feed the dogs, they look hungry. So that's notifications working really nicely. As you can see, it's not that hard to do. Tell it what you want to show, when to show it, and then go ahead and put those into the system.